we are live. So, welcome to Mandalorian Season 1, Episode 4, Thoughts. Now, this episode is called Sanctuary. Spoilers for the Star Wars movies leading up to this point, and this show up to and including this episode. I may discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. This video is not a review, it's a series of, well, thoughts. Some of it is analysis, some of it is jokes, etc. When the entire show is aired, and I've been able to watch every single episode of all the seasons they make, I will do a spoiler-free review, so I will not be going to all of my regular review stuff in this video. Now, my experience with Star Wars. I have watched all of the movies except for Episode 9, and my ratings, I... Episode 4 and 5 are 10 out of 10, Episode 6 is a 6, all three prequels are 5 out of 10, Episode 7 is a 7, Rogue One is an 8, Episode 8 is a 10, Solo is a 7. And so ranking the films worst to best, 2, 3, 1, 6, Solo, 7, Rogue One, 4, 5, and 8. And so far I'm really liking the episodes of this show. There are no broad performances in this episode. It is at times a dark episode. The acting is quite good and I think the episode lives up to its potential based on the concept it explores and there are as usual great character moments for all characters. Everyone behaves in character. And so, as far as diversity, we have several weapons, some ethnic diversity, and let's see. Right, so, this episode is written by John Favreau. He's written all episodes of all three seasons, and it is directed by Bryce Dallas Howard, which is very cool. Now, on to the specific notes for this episode. So yeah, we open on a village, they're fishing, there's pleasant music playing, so something terrible is about to happen. Star Wars is never this quaint for very long. I had guessed that this was more of Mando's childhood, but no, it's actually present present day, as, as much as anything in this show is present day. I really appreciate that we hear the attackers before we see them. It builds tension and just feels realistic. And yeah, so basically the aliens steal from the fishing village and then leave you know they 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 come back every so often to take the the food and then they leave they don't like go out of their way to hurt them because they need them to make more food and mando's having trouble keeping grogu from pressing buttons and Amanda was actually going to leave Grogu on the ship, but Grogu wants to come, so he lets him. And Mando immediately figures out, you know, I think her name is Kara. Gina Carano's character could be a problem. You can tell she doesn't belong there. Good fight between them. I like the detail. I, I, I have to admit, I, I didn't get it written down, but there was something like a bionic arm or some, some kind of, like, yeah. And that's why, you know, it's, it's really cool that they're, you know, they're evenly matched. Grogu was watching the fight, sipping supper soup, like, sup. And, yeah, we find out Kara is also hiding out. And, you know, you have these two farmers that try to hire Mando, and he keeps turning them down until... He hears, you know, oh, they live in the middle of nowhere, and, you know, so he can hide with them. That was a good little, because it makes sense, you know, after a while, they just, like, one of them is, like, giving up, and he's like, we, you know, we got all the way out here, we're going to have to go back to, you know, all the way out in the middle of nowhere where we live, you know. You know, the farmer's children are the first characters on the show to just shamelessly fawn over Grogu, so I guess they're the audience surrogate. And Mando senses there's someone there, quickly turns around, scaring the little girl. He's not used to being around people that are friendly. And Mando doesn't love that the kids walk off with Groku, but uh, Win Winter's mom, I didn't catch her name, continues to assure him, you know, um, I'm not sure, it's fine. I'm not sure, it's fine. And 
Mando and Kara, Trek, and ATST, and she pronounces it like that, so I guess I'm right to do so. Look, I don't make the rules. And some of the farmers say they can be trained to fight back. I mean, I just feel like they're five short, whether samurai or cowboys for the scenario, that's all. But seriously, though, I, I really love the... They actually, they, you know, Akira Kurosawa's work greatly influenced Star Wars, so... Actually adapting Seven Samurai is, is really, really cool. And I haven't watched the other Star Wars shows, but I do hear that there's an episode of one of the animated ones that also does this, so great. And they set a trap for the ATST. Holy crap, Winston's mom is great with that rifle. She she definitely has a past. I kinda I'm torn. On the one hand, I like that we don't find out what, but on the other, I kind of want an episode where she shows up again and we find out some about her, because we really know nothing. Like, I, I guess it's one of those things, like, you know, the people who live in that village, I feel like they were probably either born there or they moved there to get away from something in their past. I don't think she was born there. And Kara and Mando go into the camp of the raiders. And, you know, they, they sneak in, but they do get into a fight or two. I really like how the tension builds. Because they already plan at the time to explosive, so they have to get out of there before it explodes. The ATSC with the red eyes and the slow walking is like something out of a monster movie. I love it. And the walker followed them, but it does stop short of the trap instead of stepping into it. Kara gets the pulse rifle, runs out, and manages to lure it in. And after the fight, Grogu starts to swallow an alien frog hole as he does, but the children think it's gross, so he spits it back out. That's a cute little moment that, like, he does have some sense of, like, he doesn't want to upset people around him. Like, yeah. And... Kara wonders why Mando doesn't retire with Winter's mom, and Mando says they should leave the planet, it's too much attention, and he intends to leave Grogu on it. Excuse me, can I have a word? Would you settle for a syllable? And Winter's mom tries to convince Mando to stay, retire, get all John Wick, Wick prequel together. And a bounty hunter was about to shoot Grogu, but Kara shot him first. We, we get another fake out. Someone making this show really likes these fake outs. We had one in episode one, and now we have another in episode four. You know, they, they managed to go through it, two, two episodes without one, I, th I think. But the... Was there one in... Actually, come to think of it, wasn't there one in episode three with with Kara... Kar Karga. I think his name was Grief Karga. Yeah, but the anyway, yeah. Fake out. It looks like it's the you know, in in the first episode it looked like Mando was going to let IG11 shoot Grogu. In this episode it looked like the bounty hunter managed to fire a shot at Grogu. You know, I, I saw some people say well maybe he would like catch it in midair like Kylo Ren does, but I wouldn't, like, there's some chance he might not be able to do that, so let's not take any chances here. But, yeah, you know, turns out he wasn't the one, it wasn't the bounty hunter shooting, it was Kara. And, yeah, they found a tracking fob, so it is necessary to grow, take Rogu with. And Mando and Kara go their separate ways. Now, right, that is, yeah, those are all of my notes. So yeah, again, really enjoying this show so far. I'm in interested to see where it goes. I really like this. We're seeing different parts of the Star Wars galaxy. Like we've never, n none of the movies have shown a fishing village like this, but it makes sense that they exist. You know, ba basically none of the other movies, it would really have made sense for there to be a fishing village. And yeah, like the, the, you know, they looked at, well, what, have, what haven't what have we done yet? Let's not only do things we've already done for the show, so, in, in the movies for the show, 
so yeah, a, a fishing village and raiders that have to be taken care of by training the locals and I I quite liked you know we haven't seen this is the first episode where someone there's someone that Mando could hypothetically settle down with you know that's a, a great because you know I don't you know the the I would be very surprised if we do see him settle down but I guess, I don't know, it's possible the show will end with him settling down, but certainly he's not there yet. And this thing of, you know, he, he's a cowboy. He's he's going from place to place, and every so often he'll solve some problems in that place. You know, he'll take a job for the locals and do that and move on to the next place, never looking back kind of thing. So, yeah, really loving this show so far. So, yeah. I hope you enjoyed watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time.